Well, hello and welcome. Just take a look at this weather. Well, today I'm in Carmarthenshire, South Wales. Well, no pub lunch this week. Today I'm back at another Welsh castle, and this time I do mean Welsh. Well, many of the castles in this part of Wales aren't Welsh at all. They were built by the Anglo-Norman lords, and these lordships stretch down basically the border of Wales and along the south coast all the way to Pembrokeshire. And the castles include big ones like Caerphilly, Cardiff, nearby Kidwelly, which is only about 20 miles away. But this castle, Gristloin Castle, isn't one of them. This was actually built by a Welsh Lord. Well, the path up from the car park leads you to this, the Western Gatehouse. And you can see signs here, maybe with some sort of portcullis type thing or a door, which is slotted into the, the brickwork. But this wasn't the entrance to the castle. This gatehouse led into a medieval village, which was just outside the main castle. It was protected. It had walls here in a ditch, but it wasn't part of the main castle. So that's to come. So I've made it up the hill from the medieval village to the castle itself at the top of the hill. And as you can see, it's in quite a ruined state. We'll get onto that a bit later. It was founded back in the early 13th century, and it was an important seat in the ancient South Wales kingdom of De Highbath. And you can see why they built it here. It's on a rocky hill, a great defensive position overlooking the Towie Valley. So anyway, as you come up from the medieval village, the first thing you get to is this, and around here would have been the gatehouse to the outer ward. The castle had three wards, the outer ward, the middle ward, and guess what? Yes, the inner ward. And that was the heart of the castle, the last line of defense and the strongest part. So the outer ward is roughly where we are now. Let's take a look at that old tower over there. Looking down, this was the gatehouse to the outer ward, this area, and just over there is the middle ward, and roughly, I don't know if you can see somebody standing, that's the inner ward, the stronghold. Anyway, let's make our way towards the main part of the castle. Well, who exactly built this castle? Well, it's a bit uncertain, but it's believed the builder was Rhys Grieg, who was one of the sons of Rhys Ap Griffith. Anyway, when Rhys Grieg died, I have to look at this because of all the names. Listen to this now. Well, Rhys Grieg, he died in 1233, and the castle passed to his younger son, Meredith Ap Rhys, 
and then to Meredith's son, Rhys Ap Meredith. So you can see why I had to read that out. And if you don't understand what that means, Ap means son of in Welsh. So obviously, uh, Rhys Gree, when he died, his son was Meredith Ap Rhys from Rhys. Then his son was Rhys Ap Meredith. <laughs> Get that nice and clear? Good. Let's move on. I'll wait for these geese to fly over. Don't you know I'm filming? So where are we now? We're at the grandson, Rhys Ap Meredith, and he supported the English king, King Edward I. But in 1287, he fell out with him over, guess what? Land. So Edward I sent an army of 11,000 men to lay siege to the castle. And that lasted a month before it fell into the English hands. So a bit more about the castle itself. Just over here, that's the lower part of the Great Hall. I think that area were apartments, living quarters over there. And this would have been the kitchen. By the way, from here, you've got a good view of Paxton's Tower, which is a folly on the hill on the other side of the valley. And that was built as a memorial to Nelson. So when you visit Wales, even if you're not into castles, you should come to Dristloin Castle. Look at these views. It's really peaceful as well, and not very busy. I've met about four people during the couple of hours I've been here. Where's the sun gone? Typical Wales, it can't be sunny all day. Anyway, back to the castle. Back in 1403, the castle was briefly captured by Owen Glyndru before being recaptured by the English. And following that event, it fell into disrepair and it uh, sort of crumbled away. And lots of the stones were taken by the locals for building work. But anyway, if you look at the artist's impression, of the castle you can see the the round tower and these are the remains of that tower it must have been quite thick look at the size of the walls here so the sun's definitely gone in and uh, the wind's picked up getting quite cold Anyway, Dristline Castle, when I was researching this, I looked at some other videos and had, uh, some stories and I found there's quite a lot of romanticism when it comes to Welsh history. They always mention like heroic kings and princes and it sort of harks back to like Arthurian legend type of story things. And they went, wait a minute, these were ruling classes, they were the powerful families and it the stories were quite simple. They were probably quite power hungry, land hungry. The sons fought amongst themselves for power. They made allegiances when it suited them with the English and things like that. And meanwhile, the average person down there was probably busy trying to get on with their lives. So nothing's changed really, is it? <laughs> anyway, what they left behind is very picturesque. And look at this view.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed my brief visit to Drisland Castle in Carmarthenshire and also these beautiful views. And there's more videos and more castle videos coming up next and I'll see you in one of those. But before I go, I'll leave you with the words of Catatonia. Every day when I wake up, I thank the Lord I'm Welsh.